when they were lowering the casket in the grave, it was, I knew then I was never gonna see them again. It's been six years since Janie Coverdale lost her grandsons, Aaron and Elijah, in the Oklahoma City bombing. But every day is still a struggle. I needed them. I needed those boys much worse than they needed me. They made me so happy. They were my life. They really were. I couldn't wait to get off work in the evenings and go and pick them up. Just, we had so much fun. Aaron was the quiet one and he was the man of the house. He took care of Elijah. Well, he took care of me and he tried to take care of Elijah. Nobody could take care of Elijah. He was headstrong and he was gonna do whatever he thought he should do. When I turn on the light in the morning, he put the pillow over his head and say, not now, Granny, not now, Granny. <laughs> Accompanying Janie on many of her visits to the cemetery is her good friend, Kathy Wilburn. I love Kathy. I love Kathy very much. Kathy was helping raise her grandsons like I was raising mine, and I, Kathy and I have done a lot of talking. Six years we've been coming here. That's longer than the boys were alive. Kathy's grandsons, Chase and Colton Smith, were also killed in the bombing. They were two and three years old, and they were the light of our lives. Chase was a comedian. He was the funniest little boy you ever saw. He, he just kept us in stitches. Colton, on the other hand, was a follower. He was a quiet little fella. We used to say he would follow Chase to the end of the world, and I guess he did. The morning of the 19th, I'll never forget. It's ingrained in my mind forever. People were bleeding, and people were running and screaming, and there were rescue workers everywhere. I kept thinking, the daycare center is not there. I wouldn't let myself believe they were dead. In order to keep my sanity, I had to think that they were alive. Injured, but alive. It was the most horrible night in my life. After we found out the children were dead, we had to get in a car. It had car seats in the back and drive home to, uh, to a house that uh, once rang with laughter. And all of a sudden, we had no children. I was so angry. I was. I was just angry with everybody, God mostly, because in the Bible it says, ask and you shall, you shall receive, and I begged. And I remember several times I'd just scream at him and I'd say, I begged you, and I begged you, and you didn't hear me. I promised my boys at their funeral that I was going to follow this all the way through. I've wanted to visit Tim McVeigh and talk to him. I wanted to ask him why. You know, why did you hurt us? Like Janie, Kathy also feels an aching need to talk to McVeigh. So she wrote him three letters, searching for an apology from the one man who can tell her something that might help her to understand her loss. Dear Tim, I'm writing to you once again. You don't have to admit to anything, but you could tell me you're sorry about the death of my boys. McVeigh, however, has yet to write back, leaving Kathy and Janie to rely on each other and their memories for support. I'm glad Aaron and Elijah and I loved each other as much as we did. They died knowing that I loved them.